like Rodgers makes both single-ended and push-pull two games. How about talking about the difference in performance, the trade-offs, the formats as we hear it, um, where single-ended is obviously a disadvantage in power. Um, so let me address that. There, there's, a, there's a couple of considerations when you're designing amplifiers, um, either power amplifiers or integrated amplifiers. Um, Push-pull amplifiers have a unique capability of delivering a lot of power, twice the power of a single-ended amplifier. So power is an obvious consideration, power on the But there's a couple of other things that are interesting. Harmonic content, the ear is a funny device, okay? It responds differently to harmonic content, whereas even order, even order harmonics are consonant. They, they, they're very musical. The ear will accept very high degrees of even order harmonics. Whereas odd order harmonics are very, even in very low percentages, are very dissonant. So um, th there are advantages and disadvantages. Single ended amplifiers reproduce all the harmonics on a linear basis. Whereas push pull amplifiers tend to cancel the even order harmonics and the odd order harmonics stand out. So there's a trade off between that odd order harmonic content when you design a push pull amplifier and, um, and the, the power that you're trying to. So it's you know we, in engineering everything is a trade off when you're designing things you're you're trading off one thing for the other it's the nature of the business and um, so push pull amplifiers have distinct advantages in power they can um, they can cause distinct disadvantages with harmonics so if it's not designed properly um, and I'll talk about what that design is um, the uh, the harmonic content can can factor into what it sounds like. Um, Sure. You say that one will cancel certain harmonics, but will the other harmonics stay the equal? No, they, they, they actually trend downward. I'll show you a graph where they trend downward. And yeah, on, yeah. A, on a single... to what? Mm -hmm. They go downward relative to what? To the fundamental. So if you're running a one kilohertz tone, they, they, they go down linearly as compared to the one kilohertz tone. I think he's asking if you suppress the one type of harmonic or the other one. Oh no no, but they, they don't go down, so they appear to come up. So if you look on a if you look on a a, a, a harmonic content, I'll show you a chart of a, of a push pull amplifier. You'll see that the third and fifth are higher than the even orders because the even orders are canceling by the so virtue of the way it works. Speaking, push pull is more accurate because it keeps the same level of up among the sort of applause. No no. See, I, I, I never use words like more accurate. You'll never hear me say that. I, I, That's what I say. I don't understand. <laughs> uh, the, um, it's a trade-off. You can, as you can see, we design lots of push-pull amplifiers. And they've got great harmonic performance. But it's a trade-off. You've got to bias them correctly. And the most important thing, and I was going to talk about this, um, is designing a push-pull amplifier so that it doesn't create harmonic distortion. And if I can throw you just a quick picture, for those of you that are maybe not as familiar with a push-pull versus a single-ended amplifier. So a single-ended amplifier is just as you see. It's single-ended because there's one tube driving an alpha transformer to do the impedance conversion to your speaker. And a push-pull amplifier, this is the grid of the tube, supply the D plus the center cap. Okay, the tubes are operating 180 degrees out of phase on a push pull amplifier. And they're fed by a phase inverter state. Because the way they the way if you think of a single tone in an amplifier, okay, this being a 360 degree sine wave, okay, each half of the amplifier amplifies the opposite half of the cycle. So the push-pull amplifier, this, if we call this A and B, this tube will cycle on on the A cycle, and on the B cycle, this tube will cycle on. And that's what that phase inverter does. It feeds the two signals 180 degrees out of phase. So there's, there's real advantages to push-pull amplifiers because obviously you got twice the power, okay? You get, we talked about even order harmonic cancellation, but what's really cool is it cancels power supply artifacts. So if you've got crud in your power supply, okay, which everybody's fighting power supply issues, okay, because the power supply noise is present on both tubes and they're fed 180 degrees out of phase, that noise is canceled in the output transform. 
okay? So the, hold that thought, okay? So, the, the, so there are real advantages to having the, the 180 degree feed out of phase like that. It cancels, and in the engineering business, we call them artifacts, things that aren't in the original soundtrack. <clears throat> Interesting thing, too, about push-pull amplifiers. Single-ended amplifier, everybody know what clipping is? So when an amplifier runs out of poop, and it, and it can run out of poop for a couple of reasons, usually is the power supply, okay? When the amplifier runs out of poop, a single-ended amplifier clips non-linearly. So it's gonna clip here. So your sine wave, instead of being a nice tone, is now gonna look like this. Okay, so you get uneven clipping. Tremendous source of distortion, okay? The beautiful thing about a push-pull amplifier, anybody wanna take a guess what happens in a push-pull? Symmetrical. It clips symmetrically. I think that's what I was going to ask. Right. It clips symmetrically. So now the, the harmonics cancel from the clipping. The distortion cancels from the clipping. So it, 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 there are some very distinct advantages with a push-pull amplifier.